made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof was six thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. I'm going to stop right there. What I looked up on that is uh, it was 90 foot tall and 9 foot wide, what I can gather, according to my measurements. Uh, and eight, a cubit's supposed to be 18 inches. And what I could gather is 90, 90 foot tall and 9 foot wide at the base. Verse 2 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image, which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, and judges, and treasurers, and the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falls not down and worships shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falls not down and worships the, that he should be cast into the midst of a fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your God, gods, little g-gods, if you'll notice there, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it, is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast that same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands. That's kind of bold if you look at that. That's, that's a bold statement. <laughs> and who shall cast, who is that God? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, now listen to this. <laughs> this is boldness. This is being, a, I call it a fanatic or, or eccentric in God. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. That means that they didn't back up from one to the left or the right. They went straight and true. 17 says, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, now listen to that, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Amen. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them in to the fiery furnace, burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, 
and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the, into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. In the form of the poor, they like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, Amen. nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Now listen to that. That's, that's amazing. Then no, no even sign of fire was around them. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and has delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve and worship nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sword. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I know this is a long scripture, Lord, but it needs to be told. Your word needs to be told, Lord, and straight and true, and, and every letter, every jot, and every tittle needs to be shared, Lord. We ask you to anoint my lips of clay today, and let it be spoken what you have for me to speak, Lord. And Lord, just forgive me where I fail you and fall short, Lord, that I can be a willing vessel, a clean vessel, Lord, to for your living water to come into, Lord, and, and, and to spill over, Lord. And I pray that you just guide and direct what you have for me to say today. And I love you and I praise you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And amen. And I tell you today, folks, it's it's amazing thing how bold that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was there in verse 16. I love it when he says, but we're not careful to answer you in this matter. People today are also careful. They just, they just tiptoe around. They just tiptoe on the, on around the word of God. They say, well, now, this is this way and that's that way. But, but I, they didn't really mean it that way. That didn't really mean that adulterers was adulterers or, or stealing was really stealing. They just borrowed it for a little while. No, it's stealing is stealing. And, and fornication is fornication. Sin is sin. Sin is a sin is a sin. And it's, it's that way. But they were careful. They were not careful to answer this matter. They were bold. They say, really, I don't care what you think. Amen. I don't care what you say that uh, we're going to do is send in the car god will cast us or get us out of this bar but if not we're, we're still not going to serve your god if, if they were willing to say whatever the cost we were going to stand with god whatever the cost we was going to stand with you but we was, whatever the cost we was going to be obedient you know i've seen them in movies and in different ways and and they, they show me there's a big crowd of these uh, uh, people there and, and, and doing this and they're, they're, they start playing all this music and they, they bow down to the big golden image. And my vision of it was Veggie Tales. I, don't, I remember watching it on there. The, reason, the first time I ever seen it was the Veggie Tales. And, and I'm telling you, get, get, if you, if you need to get a little revival, look, look get in there and, and watch some of that stuff. It brings you right down to the level that you can understand it. But they was all bowed down, and, and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they, they come off where they, they, didn't, they didn't bow down. They didn't bow down to that golden image. They stood right there. They stood right there. They didn't, they didn't, didn't kind of hunker and hide either, but they stood there proud. They stood there proud and, and, and didn't bow down to, to the, to, in, in the veggie tail, it was a chocolate bunny and that. But it, and this is the golden image, what the Bible says. And, and they, they took that and, and they kept, uh, they, they stood their ground. And old, old Nebuchadnezzar, boy, he was mad. Nebuchadnezzar was mad that he didn't, he, he, they didn't mind him. 
Yeah. People get mad. The government gets mad when you don't mind That's it. Right. The government, they want to water things down. They want to have their thumb on you. They, they, these politicians want to have their thumb on you. Well, you can't, uh, you can't discriminate. You can't do this. But I want to tell you, if the Word of God says that you better do it because you got to be obedient to the one that, that can send you to heaven or he can send you to hell. It's Amen. really I, I messed up right there. Forgive me. But they, you know, he don't send you to hell. You can send yourself That's when you right. don't accept him. When you don't accept him as your Savior, he, you send yourself to hell because it's easy. You just call out on the name of Jesus Christ and have faith in him, and you will do it. Verse 17 says, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand. Okay, why do you think they had that much boldness? Why do you think they had that much boldness? It was, it was, I think the Lord could have been the Holy Spirit coming in there, and, and it could have been that, uh, that but I tell you what, I think they knew they was obedient to the Lord. I think they knew they was obedient, and they were doing what the Lord wanted them to do, and they said, whatever way, I'm a winner either way. And Bill Strong, I'm a winner either way, and if I die or if I stay, I'm a winner either way. I think they knew that, and I think they knew they, they, they was on the right side of, of, of the Word of God, and, and they was victorious, and that's why they knew that. And people, here's what gets me today. Here's the whole point of all this. People think that, that, that God should bring them through the fire when they're not obedient. They think they should, he should pull you through the fire and, and pull you through things in life. And, and when you're just out here doing whatever, they say, well, God didn't help me. Well, why, why would he help you when you ain't obedient, when you ain't standing up for him, when you're watering down the gospel, when you're doing all this stuff? <laughs> hey, why should he pull you out of that fire? Sometimes he does. But I'm telling you, we've got to be obedient to the one that can do something. We've got to be obedient to the one God, that is the most high God, that sent his son here to die. We're going to be obedient to him. Amen. No matter who else. Not principalities, not powers, not all this stuff. We've got to be obedient to God. But people expect to be just pulled right out. Well, I, I'm not going through a hard time. And you, and you know what they do? <laughs> Instead of praying, they ain't in the shape that they can pray for themselves, but they'll call you to pray for them. They'll call you and say, well, pray for me. I ain't doing very good. Well, I know, and I, and I don't care to pray. That's what we're supposed to. But get in the shape where you can pray for yourself. Be obedient. Say, God, forgive me for what I've been doing. And I've turned for my repentance is, is, is to ask for forgiveness and turn from them wicked ways. Not just to keep wallowing in it. They, they, have to, they have to turn from their wicked ways. They minded God here. They minded God and they didn't bow down to these gods. People today are bowing down to these gods and, and all these different things. And, and, and they need to be focused on Jesus and they need to be focused on God. I know we have work to do and I know we have things in our life that, that hinders us. <laughs> but we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We need to be doing what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Went up there and I'm telling you, I, I loved it. I know you'll probably get tired of me hearing that, but I, I, I'm telling you, I was, I was pumped up. I've been pumped up, still pumped up. Why don't continue to be pumped up? Because we're going tomorrow and Tuesday, good Lord willing, to Lupin Valley to revival. Josh loves to be there preaching, and, and Mike, uh, Mike Atkins to be there, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to, to hearing, being in fellowship with them, and, and you know, Hopewell revival might keep going. We, we'll go there. We'll go and go and, and and get involved in it. Amen. But we got to be obedient to God. God don't bless watered down stuff. Amen. He wants it pure. He wants it pure. That's why he takes like we're, we're tried and, 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 and like silver and then we're purified. He wants us to be purified. Yeah, we're not we're not perfect, don't get me wrong, but he wants us to be purified and he wants us to he wants to keep <laughs> boiling us a little bit and he wants to keep purifying us and, until we're better. The more pure you can be, the more valuable you are to him. The more pure that you are, you can you can you're worth more. Now it's with silver. Is that right? Now, I'm not a big gold or silver expert, but I, if it's a higher character, don't that mean it's pure? Is that right? It's worth more. The same way with God. The purer you are, the more you, he, he can use you. 
in the song. And I don't think he can't use you because he can. He can take the worst. He can take the low downers. He can take the, the most wicked sinner and he can take them and he can pull them up out of the miry pits of the clay and, and he can dust them off and he can start working. And I don't care what age it is, from 8 to 80, he can do it. He can save. And, and we heard last night at Hopewell of a man with the 87 years old, 87 years old wicked man. I don't know what his, his first name was Marshall. That's the only thing I know. That's all I can hear in the testimony. But the Lord saved him on his couch. And the Lord healed him of, of, of his affliction. You say, well, 87 years old. Uh, yeah, and he's 92 now. <laughs> he's 92 now, and he's still out here praising God. And then and, and we need to pray for him. He's got macular degeneration. And uh, the lady was asking for a healing last time. We, we need to be much in prayer for that. But I'm telling you, God can take him clean. Amen. He was finally obedient. He was finally coming and then knelt down to, or and prayed, humbled his heart. He wasn't at an altar, but he humbled his heart and prayed and poured his heart out to God. And he had to pour it out. And he had to empty it out to, so God can say, here you go. Let me put it all back together for you. Yeah. He had to do that. Old Nebuchadnezzar, boy, he was mad. He said, throw him in there seven more times harder. You realize that he should have known before they even got into the furnace, though. That's what people don't realize. He should, they should have known there was something different because as he was throwing the guys in there, the guys that had a hold of them was burned up. That's right. They was burned up. And they wasn't burned. If them guys burned up, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should have been burned up. Mm -hmm. But no, they wasn't. And they, they didn't see that. Of course, can you imagine what they saw right there? Boy, that's, 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 that's on good ground right there. When you when they was in there and they're looking at that fire, and, and of course they you could see right in it, <laughs> and 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 there was four of them there. Of course, he called him an angel there, Nebuchadnezzar did, but it was the Son of God. It was Jesus come down, and he come down there and he protected them. I believe he covered them like a hen, and I believe he covered them with his love, and he covered them and protected them. They wasn't nothing singed on their body. They wasn't nothing. They wasn't nothing hindered on them, and no way they could even smell. No, smoke. That's right. They didn't even smell the smoke. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, God is good. And I'm good all the time. You don't have to say that, but I'm telling you, he, he is so good. He can do that. But you have to be obedient to that. You have to be obedient. God can bring you through these trials and through these afflictions. I hate that anybody got shot in any of these shootings. I really do, but I told him this morning. I said, the one in El Paso, I see people just going shopping, you know. I guess was it a Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. I don't watch enough news to keep up. I'm, forgive me, but I did hear that much this morning. It was, it was in a Walmart. That was a blindsided thing. And these people in Dayton, I, I hate that they got shot. I don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. But they, if they wasn't at that place, at 1.30 in the morning, they wouldn't have got shot. When you're in these places, <laughs> when you're in these places that come there and you, and you have the potential to, to, to go over the edge and, and sin, and when it's like Miller's mommy told him, or daddy said, to have a place to go, get out of it. Don't linger in it. Stay out of it. Yeah. We have to. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Stacy can tell you all about that, about being obedient to the Lord. And that's what obedience, he wants obedience. And when we have, when we go through these trials, when we go through these times, my brother Ronnie was talking this morning about his daddy, the three years ago today, leaving this world. He's in heaven right now, in, in heaven, and, and he has, has the peace that passes all understanding, and will always have it for eternity. He will always have that. And when you pray, when you pray that prayer that said, come on, I don't want you to suffer, Dad. I don't want you to suffer, Mom, or whoever. When you pray that prayer, and you know where they're going, well, that's peace. And that's being obedient. And you know they've been obedient, and you've been obedient. You don't want people to linger. You don't want people to suffer. But God blesses. People have a lot of different ideals on things. I know I'm, I'm probably... Peculiar, but that's what the Bible says I'm supposed to be. It's peculiar. They say, why ain't you got a satellite dish? So i tell you what happened. <laughs> I, we went to Dayton, or the Dallas police, and, and I said, well, yeah, we're going to we're gonna rest and lay around, and, and I'm going to watch my little TV. And you know, the only thing I've seen fit to watch was I don't even know what the show was, but it's on the History Channel. This man is supposed to be out in the wilderness 
all by himself. And he, the funny thing, he had all these camera guys looking at him all over the place. That's the funny thing about that. He was out there and he said, I need electrolytes, he said. He said, I'm about down. And he was trying to catch a fish, a big sand, but he caught it. He was pulling it in and it, it went right back in the water. Of course, it cuts off, you know. I said, well, I don't turn that off. I mean, it wasn't bad, but that was the only thing out of, out of a hundred and some channels with the water. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking forward to, to catch a little uh, axe men or, or mountain men. Or, I mean, I used to watch this stuff. I liked it. I used to like axe men until it got to be beep, 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 beep. I mean, everything you see and everything and, and they couldn't cut, they couldn't say nothing without cussing them. They go, well, that ain't, I don't want that in me. I don't want Amen. to hear this stuff. Amen. Get tired of it. When, when, when you're going through the fire and when you're going through the trial uh, of life, and we all have trials, and, and I'm telling you, the closer you can get to Jesus, the better, the more protection you have. <coughs> These people stood. Three, three people out of a whole nation, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, out of a whole nation, even the Jews. I, I don't know how many Jews. I'd say there was millions of Jews there. I, I don't know the number. I, I've not read it to the, and that far, but there was a bunch of them there, and only three of them stood and didn't bow. <laughs> only three of them. Mm -hmm. I say that's what kind of Christianity is needed in this country. <laughs> yeah, there's there's people that stands on the word of God. There's people that stands and and says, "Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. Oh, well, now I'm not going to be in that gray area. I'm going to be either black or white. They're going to do that." And, and, and it comes to the point that we have to, to be that. Uh, I think if, 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 if it says in 714 of the Chronicles uh, that you know, if you take call, you look at him and seek him with your whole heart, that he'll bless the nation. He will truly do that. But I think that's why you have to be obedient. That's what's the matter. People's walking the line. People's, people's kind of straddling the fence. And I tell you what, if you've ever tried to cross a, a, a fence, if you don't watch what you're doing, especially electric fence, you ever do that number trying to cross, cross over a fence? Oh, boy, it gets you inside. That inside of your legs is tender. And that electric fence sure hurts. Out of millions of people, three people stood up and said, we're not going to bow down. We really don't care, basically says, and we're not careful to answer you in this matter. People can say stuff for, 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 for 30 minutes and not say a word. You know what I'm talking about. If you watch the news and anything in politics, they can talk forever and not say nothing. <laughs> not give you a straight answer, a yes, a no, or, or anything. They won't even hardly give you a maybe. They'll just say, blah, 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 blah. Seventeen, eighteen. You listen to this again. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of your hand, O King. But if not, be it known to you. <laughs> just like he's just looking right at us and listen. If be it known to you that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image. Which you have set up. See, that's what the, that's what the world wants. The world has these big, uh, these big uh, uh, shiny things that that, that attracts us. You re I, I reason I told you it was ninety foot tall and nine foot at the base. He was trying to compete with God. He wanted something that would compete, try to compete with God. I don't care if it was ninety million feet high, ninety million million feet wide. It wouldn't compete with God and the power of God. Amen. It would not do that. It would not compete. Because God is everywhere, all knowing, all seeing, omnipotent, he's, he's everywhere. God is, as Trudy would say, awesome. But we have to be obedient. <laughs> to get through the fire, we have to be obedient. And I mean, he'll bring it to you. He'll bring it to you straight and true. He'll bring you through it straight and true. 
But you have to be obedient. Why are people obedient today? They, they, they think people are going to people are going to judge them. They think people are going to uh, uh, you know look down upon them. I don't care what the world says. I'm going to stand for Jesus Christ and what He's done for me. I want to stand for Him, and that's you know I know the the, the, the enterprise Baptists they have a little different ways than we are. And, but I tell you what, I'm thankful that people stand on the Word of God. I'm thankful people it's peculiar, and I'm thankful people is is, is fanatic a little bit about Jesus Christ. Same way with the Christian Holiness Organization. People say, oh, I can't do that. We're dressed all the time. Well, I don't understand that, but I'm going to tell you they stand for something. Because they're, they, at least they stand for something because anymore everybody just falling for anything. They're falling for anything. You look around, it ain't the same way as it used to be. I believe it could go back that way. Mm -hmm. I believe it could go back... <laughs> And be be like it was in the fifties. You know, you look at the Andy Griffith show and you watch it. It was an enchanted time to somebody my age. And this, everything was perfect. Everything was good. Now I know, I know, I know it wasn't perfect because there was people involved, and they're not none of them perfect. But I want to tell you, it was a good time. People loved their neighbor. People visited their neighbor. And I'm telling you, if people go back to God and seek God and ask God to forgive them. He would do it. Yeah. People don't want to do it. It's sad. It's sad. I don't know if people have been, been, been out and people, there's a lot going on. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going to tell you, people need to be obedient. Mm -hmm. When the Lord said it at their heart, call out to him and ask for forgiveness. Whether you've been saved 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or never been saved at all, call out on him. Call out to the one that can do something about it. People don't want to call out, and, and it's so easy. If they would just do it, it's the easiest and hardest thing they ever do, but it's really easy. Once they, once you do it, it's man, I should have done that a hundred years ago. Why didn't I do it? Because you had self in the way. The big eye, as Miller says, that big eye gets in the way of everything. We have to call out to God. We have to, we have to know where we're going. If you want heaven to be heaven in your home, you have to be obedient to Him here. I believe this is, as Mike Conley would say, they don't know even if it's a dressing room before we get over there. Mm -hmm. We're just getting everything set up and getting our, we, we accept Him as our Savior and he, he, he works with us and guides us and directs us. And then we can make heaven our home. Mm -hmm. I believe He keeps purifying us and purifying us. I don't think it's going to be that. If we're truly following Jesus Christ, I think when it comes to the last days, I believe there's not going to be much of a transition. I believe I believe we'll be seeking God so hard and so so uh, so much in our lives that it'll just be the, the body will be laid here and the spirit will go on. I believe that spirit will be I believe, I believe it'll be prepped and go right into heaven. Why is it that the Christian gets longing for heaven? Because this world and stuff in it gets them down. Yeah. They have so much garbage today that it is just hindering us. Jesus Christ is the answer. Mm -hmm. And a multiple choice question in church, it should be every answer. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. He's, he's the answer for our sickness. He's the answer for our pain. He's the answer for our soul going to heaven. He's, he's the answer to every question on the test. But people won't even write it down. Yeah, that's right. People won't even write it down anymore. They won't say this. Well, it's uh, it's old Buddha. Well, it's uh, it's it's the government. I, I'll put government. He's like, the government answered all my prayers. And no, no, they don't. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you what. You got to have him, or you won't get there. You got to have him, and you got to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, or you won't live there eternally. You got to have it there. I told this last night. I'll be coming to a close. Sin separates you from God. And that sin is of the devil. Now, you but see, you're the one who will, will, willingly sin. But you see, the devil, the devil can't take you. He can't take your soul. But see, you're the one that gives it. Uh -huh. The devil can't take it, but you're the one that gives it. Without accepting Jesus Christ, you've already given him your, your soul. You the devil, you know, the old song, the devil went down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal. He was willing to make a deal. He was, he was behind, we 
they're willing to make the deal. Well, I want to tell you, that's what he does. He's out there trying to connive. And he's trying to tell you, well, you don't have to be saved. You don't have to come to an altar of prayer. You don't have to tell nobody. Well, ain't nobody at your funeral going to know about it if you don't confess him. You've got to confess him as your Savior. Amen. You have to. It makes whoever preaches your funeral a lot easier. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're preaching your own funeral right now. That's right. Get page 81, Miss Daisy. 